Hey everybody, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. Um, today, we are going to continue with the OBGYN emergencies, but we're going to focus a little bit on trauma during pregnancy. This is going to be a quick episode of the Monday Minutes uh, because I want to wrap up this sort of section of it, and next time we're going to get into labor and delivery. Okay, so I want to kind of focus on the trauma end of it, and then we'll get into labor and delivery uh, next time. So, of course, I always try to tell you guys this, and this is key element, right? This is the stuff <clears throat> that's going to help you with your exam. This is why it's important, right? But it's not just for your exams, right? It's key information, sure, to help you pass, right? Help you build that knowledge base, right? But it's also designed to make you a better clinician, make you better at deciding what to do with or for your patient, where to transport them, how to fill out your patient care reports more efficiently, and how you interact with other healthcare professionals, not just your partner, but also doctors and nurses, right? So real quick, we're going to go over this, all right, um, talking about trauma, some things to keep in mind, right? Due to, the, you know, when your patient's pregnant, right, due to her increased heart rate and lowered blood pressure, vital signs can be challenging. It can be a little bit tricky to make sense of. But we're looking for patients who have higher heart rates and very, very low blood pressure, especially when we talk about um, trauma, right? Because, you know, we all usually try patients, we get that higher heart rate, that lower blood pressure. You got to look at that entire picture, not just the vital signs, okay? Keep in mind, guys, the body is, desi is designed, right, to protect the mom, to preserve the mother first. It's not worried about the baby. So you get a tra trauma patient, the body is going to be trying to take the blood and stuff that's normally going to the baby, the oxygen and all that stuff going to the baby, it's going to be trying to divert that to the mother, to keep the mother alive, okay? So keep that stuff in mind when dealing with traumatic uh, trauma patients that are pregnant, okay? So some things here... Um, concerns that you might see out in the field, all right, that can be caused by trauma, miscarriages, I spelled that wrong, uh, placenta previa, abruptio, placenta, and uterine rupture, okay? So I want to just kind of break that down just a little bit here, okay? Talk about miscarriage, spelled it right on this slide. Um, you know, this guy, is, this is that spontaneous demise of a pregnancy, right? It's because of, it's because of the trauma, Right, it's getting rid of the getting rid of the baby. Okay, try to go ahead and collect any tissue or clots or whatever, and take that with you to the hospital if you can on those types of um, miscarriages due to the trauma. Okay, now placenta previa. This is an abnormal positioning of the placenta over the cervix. Okay, over the opening. All right, patients will be having profuse blood. It's going to be usually painless, and it's a bright red bleeding. Okay, risk factors to think about when you talk about placenta privia is that the, the mother might have multiple pregnancies, uh, rapid succession of pregnancies, meaning she's had a baby one after another. Okay, not a lot of time in between getting pregnant. Okay, usually they're over 35 years old and might even have a history of placenta previa as well. Now, of course, the, this can happen even without trauma, but you might see it more in a trauma uh, situation. Okay, now abrupt your placenta, this is that premature detachment of the placenta. Normally the placenta is situated a certain way, and what happens is this is a premature detachment of that because of the trauma. Okay, now in here, it's different. Uh, this is where you're going to have instead sort of bright red blood like you see in placenta previa, this is going to be a dark red blood. And instead of painless, the patient is going to have severe pain. All right, usually it's constant lower uh, abdominal pain, and again, that dark red bleeding, okay? R risk factors for these types of patients, if they maybe have a history of preeclampsia, maybe they're chronically uh, hypertensive. Again, same thing with these people too. All right, these patients might have multiple pregnancies, okay? Um, and maybe even a previous history of this as well, okay? Keep an eye out for this stuff, guys, especially with those car accident patients, all right? Um... Final uterine rupture, I kind of put this in here because you can see this on trauma. Uh, usually this usually happens much more commonly after the onset of labor, all right? 
So it's kind of when you're dealing with these pages, guys, put that picture together, okay? Kind of look at the, the entire picture, what's going on with the patient, their history. How pregnant are they? Are they two months pregnant or are they eight and a half, nine months pregnant, right? Is there bleeding? Did the water break? Are they having pain? Are they having contractions? Okay, what's the mechanism of injury? What actually happened? Was it a car accident? Was it a fall? What, you know, whatever the case may be, okay? Put everything together. But what I'm trying to do here, guys, as always with these Monday Minutes, is to give you key um, elements that you're going to see on your test. If you don't understand and you're not grasping what I mean by placenta privia, if you don't understand what I mean by the positioning of the placenta, okay, um, crack open that textbook, guys. Right, look a little deeper into what these are so you can master this topic, have a more well rounded understanding of this topic. Okay, I'm hoping that these key elements drive you to seek out the more, more information. Okay, so that when you get these patients, you know the key elements, but you also know what to do. Okay, and that's what it's all, all about, guys. There's no way you're going to cram this into a, to a quick video, right? So I break it down, try to give you nice short chunks to encourage you to go ahead and look more. You don't have to do it now. We're all busy, but go ahead and do it, all right? Guys, manage it for this most of the time. It's going to be like you manage any other trauma patient, oxygen, IV, fluids, um, positioning of the patient even might be something you're going to consider as well. Okay, but follow your local guidelines. Follow what's, what your medical director and what your protocols say to do for these types of patients. All right, guys, that's it for me. Again, this is a quick um, episode today. I want to get into labor and delivery next time. Okay, but be sure to engage with me, guys. Follow me on social media. Or follow me on on uh, Twitter, Instagram. I'm on EMS Safe on both of those channels. I'm also on Facebook. You can get me at facebook.com forward slash EMS professional. All right, guys, that's it for me. Um, any comments, concerns, questions, give me a call. All right, it's my email is contact at emsofficehours.com. And be sure to check be sure to check the main site at emsofficehours.com. Check out previous Monday minutes, check out the other giveaways and other uh, videos and audios and content there, okay, that I think will get you thinking about how to be a better clinician, how to be better in EMS. All right, so go ahead and do that for me, guys. Uh, check me out there, leave comments, leave me feedback. That's what drives me and keeps me making these videos and this content better and better. All right, guys, that's it for me. As always, I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.